Yeah. Hello everyone. Namaste. I am Ramnath who would like to share with you some information on the VLSI topic. Function of tap cell in VLSI design. Please feel free to provide your comments or any suggestions. Thank you. Yeah, in the sound design, as you all know, there will be many standard cells, memories, analog blocks, etc. to implement a system functionality. In this video, we will understand the standard cell tap cell function, uh, its usage in more detail. Before we go further, let us consider the discrete MOS transistor, which is a three terminal device, which is shown here. <clears throat> so its symbolic uh, representation is also shown. G represents a gate, D represents a drain, S represents a source. Okay, here you will also observe that um, the source uh, and the substrate are tied together and the externally only substrate source is visible so uh, uh, symbolically it is represented by the three terminal device which is also shown uh, by the uh, ic <coughs> so here assume that uh, in a soft design environment this same uh, device if it is implemented it will look somewhat like this okay so um, several uh, mos transistor sitting next to each other okay so this is a uh, you, you, the, these uh, mos transistors assume that they are all placed in a row okay so uh, if you observe here uh, there is lot of uh, area wasted because each uh, substrate is con tap connection is consuming some uh, area in the below diagram you will observe that the substrate connection uh, which is a p plus which, which is shared by many of the mos transistors so it is uh, definitely saving some uh, extra space so packaging density of the MOS transistors in same area has increased. You can yourself figure out that the number the MOS transistor uh, are more in the below row. <laughs> so we will further uh, understand how the connections are uh, made to the tap cell. You will observe that the first row belongs to the N MOS transistor configuration and the below row uh, correspond to the P MOS configuration. Okay, in the first row, <coughs> uh, substrate is connected to VBB and uh, the source is connected to VSS. Similarly, it is shown here. Okay, so you will observe that uh, uh, after a certain interval, the again source con uh, substrate connection is made. In the same way, uh, even in the uh, P well, in the P MOS, an N well is put, and then the sub substrate of here for this P MOS, this is the N well. So this uh, N plus connection is connected to VPP, and the source of the P MOS is connected to VDD, and uh, there will be the the VPP can be same as VDD and in some cases it can be higher than VDD or lower than VDD same in this case okay you will observe that a tap cell can be formed by using only this much content that means like P substrate and the P plus connection and in the P MOS configuration it can contain only the P substrate, N well, and the N plus connection. Okay, and it will have a separate terminal P. And uh, this is the full uh, tap cell uh, configuration where both N MOS uh, uh, substrate connection and P MOS substrate connection exists. Okay, they can also be present individually. And here you will figure out that how the tap cell connectivity exists 
okay here and as mentioned earlier it is connected to vbv substrate connection and the source is connected to bss and you will understand that if vbb and vss are same that is called a zero bias condition however if the uh, voltages of vbb and vss are different then uh, the it will lead to uh, biasing the uh, source uh, junction and hence that will affect the vth of the mos transistor so as per this equation the vth in the case of an nmos device so it depends upon the source and uh, uh, substrate uh, voltage okay so based on this the vt value will change and hence in the forward bias condition where vth is reduced so it will result in higher performance and speed and more power consumption similarly in the reverse body bias condition where it is uh, uh, impacted due to vth being higher so appropriately vbb and vss are considered so then vth will be higher hence it will result in lower performance and similarly it will lead to lesser power consumption some of these things are very much essential in the dynamic voltage frequency scaling okay wherein the based on the frequency uh, operating frequency of the specific mode of the chip the um, voltage conditions uh, in the um, bias condition will be tuned okay however since we are having separate bias controls there is slight penalty need to be made in terms of the power grid connection okay so we need to specifically route these vbb signals aside to routing the power vss and vdd so here uh, in the VBB connection need to be made, VSS connection need to be made. Similarly, in the earlier case, VPP and VDD connections, power grids need to be made separately. So that will consume extra routing. And also since we, if at all, if you need to make RBB or FBB voltage, extra volt, LDOs also need to be uh, ensured. <laughs> Here, we will figure out how much will be the tap cell to tap cell spacing okay so if you observe that there is a it is this tap cell to tap cell spacing is technology dependent one we will figure out how the that is a technology dependent okay as you know this tap cell uh, is placed to prevent latch up which is a reliability concern okay and uh, here you will observe that uh, this is the NMOS uh, uh, section and this is the PMOS section. These two are clubbed together in the. Yeah, we will further understand how the tap cell spacing affect the latch up phenomenon. Okay, and here uh, this is the substrate connection of the NMOS. This is the substrate connection of the PMOS and the representative uh, NMOS transistors. And the PMOS transistors and their connections okay here so uh, this is the uh, vertical uh, PNP transistor this is the lateral NPN transistor in, and this NPN transistor is formed due to N plus P and N well okay so N P N and this vertical PNP transistor is formed by P and N P. Okay, so that's how it is formed. And this is this is uh, this there will be a resistor between the substrate connection to the N plus N well, and that is due to the N well resistor. Similarly, due to this uh, P substrate there will be uh, a R sub uh, resistor to the 
base of this uh, PMP uh, NPN. So uh, these resistors are very very crucial and they will affect the latch up uh, condition. Okay. So if you further analyze, this is the circuit uh, equivalent circuit representation of this uh, transistors. Okay. Here R sub is this one. R and W is this one. Okay. So these are the BJT transistors, VDD and VSS. Okay. That one. And uh, if you observe carefully, that latch up can be triggered due to a small noise disturbance. Okay. And this small this will result in a small current which passes first either through R and W or through R sub. Okay. So assume that it passes through this current. Okay. Then what will happen is like this uh, current passing through this R sub, it will result in a voltage drop. This voltage drop will uh, lead to a positive forward bias of this base emitter. Uh, uh, junction and then a large collector current will flow that collector current partly it will go through the base and partly it will also go through the RNW because of this again this NP and trans PNP transistor gets forward biased so now that will result in a color more collector current which will again lead to slightly higher current than it saw before so again now this will uh, have more forward voltage drop will result then this will lead to higher base emitter junction uh, voltage and thus this npn transistor will be more forward biased then again in the same way so this uh, pnp transistor will be more forward biased so this will be forming a positive regenerative loop and uh, this current gains of PNP and NPN will determine the latch up uh, condition. Okay, so here what I would like to emphasize here is RNW and R sub resistors play a crucial role and they are resulting due to the well resistance and the P substrate uh, resistance. Okay, so this is why this uh, 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 the latch up condition is occurring okay if r and w and r sub are very low then this possibility of latch up condition will be very low okay so that is what uh, uh, is shown and you will observe that this pnpn thyristor kind of uh, waveform is shown in this one and this is the holding current this is current versus voltage okay so this voltage is applied between this and this here okay when it goes high after a certain voltage it will be in the off condition afterwards it will be going into the on region and this is the latch up uh, is uh, scr is in the on condition okay so you will observe that this holding current is the key thing and this holding current largely depends on r sub and r and w so in the other condition where now we are considering a transistor which is far away from the substrate okay earlier we considered this MOS uh, configuration now we are considering slightly away from the source uh, substrate so here this this uh, yeah, NMOS is far away from the substrate this is also far away from the substrate just for uh, understanding purpose you considered that the spacing is large okay um, so now you will observe that uh, in the same uh, SCR configuration or PNPN configuration we will observe that there is more resistances seen before it meets the base okay in the same way here also you are seeing more resistance coming and then reaching the base of this uh, NPN transistor. So the, in this specific configuration, RNW is large, R sub is also large. So for a sm very small current, as was seen in the previous uh, condition, here for a very small condition, the forward the um, base emitter junction of this NPN transistor can be forward biased. 
in the same way for the small uh, collector current this uh, um, transistor will also get forward biased very quickly so because of this the regenerative loop will quickly form and hence it will um, go into the uh, it will pass the holding current and the latch up uh, occurrence will be uh, highly probable hence we will say that the transistor the tap cell to tap cell distance is very key and hence the tap cell to tap cell spacing which is determined based on several testing methods the uh, fab will determine the a specific uh, spacing criterion as per the technology and other uh, voltage conditions and noise considerations so based on that the that spacing we need to ensure so that is how the tap cell and its spacing are key for the proper functioning this we need to ensure during the um, uh, digital row placements uh, especially in the case of tapless cells uh, when we are we working with the standard cells we need to place the tap cells uh, in the row if prefixed and then we need to place the standard cells okay you can refer to the following references which will give more details on the topic uh, concern